Okay, I hope you are rested up because this is part two of the chain rule and I think honestly this homework section is going to look like it has the most work and it looks so complicated, but um, I think you're going to be able to do the problems pretty easily. Um, it just is going to be a lot of work. So we're going to continue with the chain rule, getting those um, tricky situations to make sure you recognize which function to start with, taking the derivative, and then we're going to talk about absolute value derivatives. Now, these don't show up a lot, but um, it's really like the last type of function that we need to discuss. So sometimes you might have to do the chain rule three or four times. You just do it as many times as it applies, okay? So on number one, remember that is cubed. So you want to start by rewriting the whole function. Okay, so on the inside and then on the outside. So that means the outside is a power. So you're gonna start with a power rule, okay? So y prime, you bring the three down, the inside stays the same, and the derivative, uh, sorry, subtract one. Now we need to go back and take the derivative of this inside, which is another chain rule because you have it's inside and sine is on the outside, okay? So for this chain rule, sine is on the outside. So you're gonna start with the trig derivative. The derivative of sine is cosine. It's inside stays the same. And then we multiply by the derivative of it's inside, okay? So we really did a chain rule twice. But if you start talking to yourself the way that I'm talking to you, I think it makes it a lot more reasonable and understandable. So the only thing we can really do is multiply the three and the four. You can write your squared. You don't have to. And that's it. Okay, all of these are being multiplied. Perfect. All right, so let's look at number two. So we have a whole inside and we have an outside power. So you're gonna start with a power rule. Y prime, bring the power down. The inside stays the same and subtract one. Now we need to go back and do the derivative of that inside, which is two separate functions. So on the first derivative, we have an outside and we have an inside. So we're gonna start with another chain rule. The derivative of the outside is a trig, so trig derivative. Cosine, its inside stays the same, times the derivative of its inside, plus the derivative of 4x squared is a power rule. All right, the only thing you can do is really put that two in front. So four, we could factor out another two, but at this point, you should be able to match it up if this was multiple choice. What I don't want you to do is to multiply and say that's 4x. That is not true. You're not allowed to do that. And you also can't add the 2x and the 8x together. Okay, so some of these just look really long, like number three, lots of space. We've got two separate functions. Here's one, here's two. That's gonna be a chain rule derivative, and that's gonna be a chain rule derivative, okay, when we get to it. But first we have to start with the product rule. So, we get one. Now, the derivative of two, so that's a chain rule. That's the inside. That's the outside. So we start with the trig derivative. Cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent of the inside stays the same. Then we go back and multiply by the derivative of the original inside, which there's only one of them. So two, so that's one. This was all d2 plus two. Now d1 is another chain rule. We've got an inside and an outside. The outside is a power rule, so that's how you're gonna start. You're gonna bring the two down. 
its inside stays the same, subtract 1. Then we take the derivative of that inside. Really wide. Um, with the product rule, you typically want to do common factoring. So we can take out a 2. Um, take out one of the 2x minus 1s. Take out a cosecant 2x. And that's it. So we're left with a negative. I can distribute that negative. Meh, let's not. 2x minus 1 cotangent plus 2. Looks really complicated, but that's what it is. All right, absolute value. So if I was finding the slope, I would attack this problem differently. If we're finding the derivative, this is how I attack it. So the trick for finding the derivative of an absolute value function is to realize that the absolute value is really made up of the square root of that quantity squared. That way you ensure inside the radical is positive. And that's what the absolute value means. So once you realize this, you want to rewrite your original problem, and then it's going to be a chain rule. Okay, so like, let's look at this example. And we won't spend a lot of time doing absolute value, just so you know. Um, it's rare that this shows up on the AP exam, but I'm also preparing you for other math courses in the future if you take it. So the first thing we want to do is rewrite this as the derivative of x squared minus 4 squared. Now, in order to do this derivative, we actually need to rewrite that. So we've got, I'm going to put a little parenthesis, um, x squared minus 4 squared, and then that is to the 1 half power. Now, I know we can um, multiply these together using exponent rules, but then that negates the whole part of absolute value. So you don't want to do that, okay? <laughs> it's tempting, but don't. All right, so on our derivative, we're going to get the inside and the outside. So we're going to start with the power rule. Bring the 1 half down. The inside stays the same. And then subtract 1. Okay? Then we're going to do the derivative of the inside, which is another chain rule. It's inside and it's outside, so another power. So bring the 2 down. The inside stays the same. Subtract 1, the derivative of its inside. Okay? All right, so now if we clean this up, there's a lot. Um, we've got the twos cancel. I've got this x squared minus 4 on top. We've got, I'm going to leave this here for a second. You'll see why in a minute. And then we've got this. I'm going to rewrite that as that. And then x squared minus 4 squared. That way we can kind of go back to this, which we're going to rewrite that. We've got x squared minus 4 over, that's the absolute value. And I'm going to leave it like this. That would be our derivative. Now you might say, Mrs. Eden, why are we not putting that on top? Why can those um, not reduce. First of all, we can't reduce x squared minus 4 because this has absolute value and that doesn't. But what do we notice when I compare this to the original problem? Oh my goodness, the function did not change at all. On top, I just got the inside. On the bottom, I got the original. 
And this 2x, that's actually the derivative of the inside. So that is kind of our shortcut rule <laughs> for taking the absolute value. I do it one time the long time, but I wouldn't ever do this again. So if we have the derivative of the absolute value, you're going to remember that it's just the inside, then it's the absolute value, and then it's times the derivative of the inside. That's it. So much shorter. Okay, so on this problem, if I want to find the equation of the tangent line, we're going to take the derivative. So this is my u. So we get u over the absolute value, and then the derivative is power rules. Much nicer, isn't that? Okay, our tangent slope, we want to know when x equals 2. So we're going to plug that in. Um, 2 cubed plus 3 times 2. 2 cubed plus 3 times 2. And 3 times 2. So if we clean all of this up, we get what? 8 plus 6 is 14. It's positive. Times another positive. So that makes that 1. Positive 1. What's that? 4, 12, 12 plus 3, 15. So 15 is our slope. With a point, I need to plug in 2. So we just did the absolute value down here, which we said was 14. So y minus y, m, x minus x. And I'm good with that. Um, if you want to get y alone, I, it does not bother me. And we can clean up, do whatever you want to do. Okay, on a free response, this is full credit though. Okay. Saved a little bit of time. I'm at 12 minutes. Um, these problems will take a little longer for you to do, so just be careful with all of your values. All right, good luck.